Red Bull Storm Chase is the most extreme windsurfing event on the planet. Super, super windy. It's insane out there. From all the storm chase of the past, this now, it's beating it all. Any incident in the water, you've got such a limited window to provide an effective response. The conditions have really, really picked up. Just be one, go ahead. In the sea, you don't get a second chance. That environment can kill you. Red seal dying, red seal dying. More very wet and very windy weather is heading across all parts throughout the rest of this week. A one particular bout of wet and very windy weather is going to come courtesy of Storm Gareth. We waited years for the storm chase to happen. So through Tuesday evening, we're particularly concerned about parts of Northern Ireland and southwest Scotland. Winds in excess of 100 kilometres per hour were forecast and Donegal looked like it was going to be the spot that it could all happen in. There's the likelihood of some power losses in places as well and very large waves on the coast. Yeah, it's just a once in a lifetime thing that you really want to be part of it and yeah, really stoked to be here now with everyone. The special thing is that we have like the best riders in the world in like the toughest conditions. The stronger the wind, the higher you're gonna jump. With that high to jump, you know, the stakes are higher. It's a real simple equation. The rescue team were there to protect the riders, but we're also looking out very much for each other as a team. It's, it's all on the line for the guys as much as the athletes. Finn, could you get me your estimate how much longer we'll need until we can start? There's three more skis to come down to 30 minutes. Copy that. Yeah, today's shakedown day. It's mobilization. We're on and out the bumps, test all the skis, test all the comms equipment, test all the tracking equipment. The Water Patrol team, they're an extremely skilled and experienced group of operators. A lot of us have worked together before and we're members of the Irish Tow Surf Rescue Club, which has formed up to keep big wave surfers safe. It's a very dynamic environment. It's constant risk assessment. You gotta be prepared for these kinds of things. Each person perceives an injury differently. Like, I'm medically trained to a really high level, so I'll be looking at all the aspects of risk assessment. If I go in to pick somebody up and they're unconscious, I'm getting them onto the sled, and I'm gonna take them to a safe spot so I can work on them. Are you good to go, yeah? It's a big workload for the guys. They operate under high pressure. They can't make a mistake. The guys have to be on point every time. <laughs> Madness. With experience comes good judgment. Oh, yeah. We each have to have each other's back. There's no room for egos. You're going to be looking out for your buddy because you're very aware that you're going to risk your life potentially to go save the athlete. When it came to the day, the wind speeds had escalated. I never underestimate the sea. It's just an environment we're not bred for. Like I said, the main thing when you get to that casualty, spinal, you're just going to try and maintain them as best you can. If it's airways compromised, you're going to try and keep this airway open. If you're the first man on the scene is unconscious, try and get five rescue breaths into him. Jobs, Jobs here, go ahead. Yeah, Jobs, we got all skis in the water, we're good to go. Okay, thanks. We're going for first possible start on the water, 9.20. Red flag is up, heat number one, start in approximately four minutes. The contest actually starts whenever the storm hits. One. As soon as that happens, green light, we go. 51, radio check, over. Radio check, loud and clear. How it feels? Uh, a little bit mad. 
you know, there's extreme weather on land and you hide indoors and we're sitting on jet skis out in the sea. When you're out in big seas, bad things can happen very fast. If, you, if you're not scared, you're a liar. Conditions have really, really picked up. Crazy, the height these guys are doing, it's mental. That is without a doubt the windiest and most gnarly conditions I've ever windsurfed in. Fall from that sort of height and get caught up with their gear. The sort of injuries that we're looking at, it's lower limb, upper limb, but we also have to think about worst case scenario. Concussion, head injuries, anything that's life threatening. And in the water, that takes on a whole different meaning. I think I broke one rib. I don't know, just too, too much, too much for me. Any casualty situation on land, you can quite rapidly remove the casualty from the danger. This, until you remove the casualty from the water, they're constantly in danger. Ricardo, 51. Yes, a good eye on Ricardo. He's had a big crash. Jet ski one, go ahead. Spotter 51. Yeah. Can you tell me what's going on? As soon as somebody is compromised in the water, it's life threatening. You got eyes on top. If an incident happens, you're imagining the worst case scenario but hoping for the best. Can you see the seal? Yeah, we barely can see the red thing is because of the best visibility. We have him on the side. Okay, how's he doing? Uh, the jet ski just dropped him in his gear. We've been trained so well that our state of mind is calm. If you start panicking, if you start overthinking things, that's when something's going to go wrong. We trust what we've been taught, what we practice, and then we put that into play. Hats off to what the lads did out there. Everybody knew today would be the ultimate test, and you saw the amount of rescues that they did there, the way they handled themselves. Oh, just, you know, it's pride in the job. Oh, why do I do it? Why do people go to the pub and drink and why do people go play football? For us, it's our addiction to, to being beside the sea and our motivation and is to see the boundaries pushed. It's not something everyone can do. It's either within you or it isn't. Saving somebody's life, yeah, I think it's the greatest honour you can have.